Hello YouTube, so today I'll be covering a very important concept known as variables. So variables we've already come in slightly in the other video, but today we're going to be learning about different types of variables and how they work in Java. So starting off, there's two different types of variables. There's the global variables, sometimes known as field in Java, and then there's local variables. So what's the difference between them? Global variables you place up here. They're not inside any of these blocks of code known as methods, but they're outside. Usually they're right below public class. So here we have a variable called C, which relates to console, and it's static. If we remove static from here, it's not going to work. Why? Because this mode is static here, so we need static here. Okay, so this works fine. Um, so basically the variable type is called C. So if we have a static int age and we output age, it will output zero. Here we declared a global variable known as age, which is an integer. And here's a very important concept to understand. All variables that are global have different values than those which are local. So as you see here, we didn't provide an actual value for age, and it still outputs zero. But let's say we have a sub-variable in here, which is a local variable, and we're going to make it, give it no value. If we do a c.println age2, let's see what happens. It gives an error because it must have a definite value. But you know what? Age wasn't given a definite value. And you know why? Because all the variables that are global are given pre-established values. So if we have a static string, so string is a selection of text, and we'll call it name. Name will be just nothing. It won't crash. But if we have h2 or a string inside of um, the main program, it will indeed crash. So here we see, you know, there's nothing provided for. But the program doesn't crash. This works for integers. This works for strings. This works for booleans. Basically, what all of those are called, with the exception of string, are primitive data types. Now, an additional example would include characters, which is just a single character. Then you would have booleans, which are true and false statements. Then you would have, there's also doubles, which are similar to integers, but they also store decimals. And then there's a couple more we'll cover in future tutorials. So basically here, you can declare different types of variables. And you can use them, but that's the general purpose of, the, of the, the variables. So now there's two different ways to make this. So you can do a static int age. So age is the name of the variable, known as the identifier, and this is the variable type. And then we can go like it. Then we can go here, and we can say age equals five. C dot print line. C dot print age. So five. Okay. Now we can make this higher. Or we can make it one, uh, 10,000 minus 5. We can multiply by 2. We can do different math operations with these variables. Now let's make let's give name a value of, 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 of Bob. Now strings are very interesting. Strings have a variety of different functions, and this makes them very unique. And inside Java, there's different a wide variety of different functions. So what we would do is we would take name. And inside name, we can add a dot, and here we have a series of commands. So we can do dot length, open bracket, close bracket, and this will say the number of letters within Bob. We can also type in here char at zero, and it tells me what the first character is at position zero. So here it would go position zero, position one, position two. It starts at zero and it goes onwards. If you enter at Bob at four, it will give you an error because it's out of the range. So you can make a 1 here, and it works just fine. Oh. You can also do math operation uh, in here. 9 minus 8. And it still does 0. So those are just some important concepts to understand about um, strings. Now we can also try to do some number math. So let's quickly establish a value of int age equals 2. And then here, let's make age 2 equals Three. Let's make an output c dot print line h minus h two. Now this will take one integer and subtract it by another. Run. Outputs two is five minus three two. Yes, it is. Continuing on. 
you can also divide it. Now, will the program crash because there's two integers? Let's see we'll find out. Nope. What it actually does is Java always rounds down. So that's one way to put it. But now let's make it a double. So we said that doubles are decimal numbers and it'll output 1.666667. Let's try something special. What if we only want a couple decimal places? Let's do a comma two. Two point blank. Three one three. Two one point seven. So perfect. This is exactly what we want. One point six seven. So essentially this is what I uh, what is called an overload. Basically for C print line it has very various different functions and inside this arithmetic operation, if you do a comma it doubles, you can also specify how many digits you want within the answer. If we do one, it will return something similar to what it would happen if we had integers. Except the fact that it rounds up. Okay. So yeah, this is about it for the variables tutorial. Um Basically, just understand that booleans are true and false statements, integers are whole numbers, doubles are decimal numbers, characters store only single value, and know the difference between global variables and local variables. Thanks for watching, and we'll be covering static and public-private variables in another video. Thanks for watching.